hey, it's Plumber Tom. Don't forget to check in the comments below for a link where you can find additional resources like practice tests and courses that you can take. Your support helps me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome to this presentation from the International Plumbing Code. My name is Thomas. And in this presentation, we're gonna look at something that you really need to know if you're going to take a state test, and that is roof drain sizing or storm drainage sizing. We're gonna go over that in detail. You're gonna to need to know how to calculate this. Now, I know, I know, you don't actually do that in your daily work for the most part, right? If you're involved as a plumber with the installation of storm drainage or roof drains, it's all on the plan. It's just spelled out for you. You just order your pipe and your fittings and you go and you hook it up. But it's definitely on a state test and you got to know how to calculate it. And it's really not that bad. We're going to go over this a couple of times. You'll see how this works. You're going to nail it. So let's do this. Storm drainage sizing is detailed in section 1106. So if you haven't already read that or looked into that, make sure you go there. Also make sure that you have watched the other full presentation on chapter 11 so that you don't miss any of the important information about this chapter. We're not gonna dig deep into the code in this presentation. We're going straight into sizing. Let's go over five steps. Now this isn't outlined in the code like step one to five, but these are the steps that you can go through so that you can properly size roof drains. Here they are. Number one, first you need to calculate the area of the surface of the roof in square feet. That information is going to be used to calculate the gallons per minute to use on the sizing tables to find your pipe size. So you have to start with area square feet. The second step is to find out the one hour rainfall rate as given on the maps in 1106.1. You'll find maps of the United States with rainfall rates noted by contour lines that cross the map and those are numbered. We'll look at that. This is an indication of the most rain that we have seen in one hour in the last hundred years. It's how bad can it be? What's the worst that it can do? And we take that and size according to those maximums. Because hey, if it can rain that hard in the past, it can probably do that in the future. Step number three, we calculate the gallons per minute from the area of the roof that we figured and the rate of rainfall, that 100 year rate. And we put it into this wonderful equation that they've given us in the 2021 version of the International Plumbing Code. It goes like this. Gallons per minute equals the rate of rainfall times the area of the roof times our magical number, 0 0.0104. Take those numbers, multiply them together, and boom, you've got your gallons per minute. That's going to be key information when we head to the tables. But before we go to the sizing tables, there is another step in between that we have to consider, which is, what if we have a surface of a roof and it has more than one set of roof drains. Well, we have that certain square foot area. We're going to need to divide that by the number of roof drains that serve that area. So if we have two sets of roof drains up on the roof, that would be regular primary drain and secondary drain, right? That's our set. Two sets up on the roof, then we're going to divide our gallons per minute by two, and that's going to give us the information we need to size those individual sets. We could size them all together later and find the total drain size. And let's do that for fun. Let's do that in this presentation. We'll go through all of those scenarios. 
But I have to mention the very last step here. Step number five is we take that information, the gallons per minute we've calculated, and we size it according to our sizing tables. They're all written right there in the code. Let's try it out. So here we go. Step one, we're going to do an actual example here. Step one, we're going to calculate the area of the roof surface. We're looking for square footage in those dimensions. Here we have it. Example number one, a basic rectangular building with a length of 140 feet and a width of 65 feet. So how are we going to get the area of this roof? This is a basic multiplication problem. Area equals length times the width. So we take 65 and we multiply that by 140 and we get 9,100 square feet. We have our square footage. Step two in our sequence is to find the one hour rainfall rate. Let's say in this example, we look on the map and we find that it's two inches. That's the worst it's done in a hundred years. We got two inches of water in one hour. Wow, it rained. And that's the number we're going to use. Step number three, we're going to calculate the gallons per minute based on our equation. Remember, gallons per minute equals the rainfall rate times the area of the roof surface times our constant 0 0.0104. Plug our numbers in. Let's try it out. Our area was 9,100 square feet. Our rainfall rate is 2 inches. So we say, okay, gallons per minute equals 2 inches times 9,100 times 0 0.0104. And we get our gallons per minute is 189.28. With our gallons per minute, we need to consider on this roof, how many sets of roof drains do we have? Well, there's only one set. Everything's going to one location on this roof. So we don't need to divide that. Or we could divide it by one, but it's going to give us the same thing, right? <laughs> That's how math works with ones. So let's go to the table. How do you use the table? Let's take a time out and review how this sizing table works. As we examine this table, you can see we have the capacity in gallons per minute listed throughout the table on the right side. It is then divided into vertical drains and a section of horizontal drain pipes. The section for horizontal drain pipes are further separated into columns indicating the slope. The slope is definitely going to affect the size of the pipe. So all of these areas down below on this table give us our gallons per minute. We take our slope and our gallons per minute and then we come across to the left and we'll find our pipe sizes in the far left column. Okay, now that we've reviewed that, let's go use that. Let's use the table. In this scenario, let's say we're running eighth inch per foot, just keeping a slow but steady slope. We're going to use that column and come down. Our number was 189, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. 189 is more than 22. It's more than 55. It's more than 115 and it's close, but it's still more than 165. So we move to the next line. It is less than 344. So as long as we are equal to or less than the number indicated on the table, that's the row we're going to settle into. So now we know this row. From here, we're going to move across to the left and we find that we have a six inch pipe for this building. Example number one. Quick survey. Hey, Plumber Tom, what pipe sizes have you seen when you've installed roof drains? Well, let's see. I've installed three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch, eight inch, and 10 inch pipes. Ooh, let's have a look at example number two. Conveniently, this is the exact same roof that we just did. 140 feet by 65 feet. What's the difference? Well, this time we're seeing two sets of roof drains. Instead of being in the middle like it was on the last example, these are spread out to both ends of the building. And that's probably good because we're going to slope it out to the ends. So now we have two that we need to work with. 
We're going to jump with those same numbers we had on example one to our step number four. In step number four, we're going to divide for the number of roof drains that service that area. And in this case, again, we have two sets. So we would take our 189 and divide that by two, which is going to give us 94.64 gallons per minute. So let's take that to the table and see how this sizes out now that we have two sets of roof drains on either end. We're going to round up to 95. We've got eighth inch per foot column. 95 is more than 22. It's more than 55, but it's less than 115. So we're going to settle into that row and we're going to move across to the left. And we find that for example, number two, where we've split this up, we're going to have four inch pipe. Now that would be a four inch pipe on each end for both sets. But when those come together, let's say our primary drains run together somewhere in the building or maybe just outside, then we'll go to the six inch pipe that we sized before, which would service the entire area of the roof. Okay, is this making sense? I hope so. I hope you're following me. Let's go to another example. Example number three. This time we're going to calculate the area of a lower roof. You can see that this office building has an upper level and a lower level. While those drains may come together, and we might size those later, let's just focus on the lower portion of this roof. On the lower end, we have a length of 145 feet and a width of 96 feet. So we can do the math here, basic multiplication. Finding the area, we go 145 feet times 96 feet is going to give us 13,920 square feet. That's the lower portion of the roof. But wait, there's more. The thing is, in 1106.4, we have to understand that vertical walls are going to catch some rain. And they're going to divert that rain onto the roof. And that's going to affect the amount of water that flows through the roof drain. And so, we must calculate in any vertical walls that divert water onto the flat surface area. And the way that we calculate that is, we take the area of the vertical wall, and we take one half of the area, and we add that to our area of the flat roof, and that's how we compensate for the amount of rain that's going to be added because of that wall diverting onto the roof. So let's do that. Take a look at this. There's an 80 foot wall and it is 96 feet wide. So we'll take 80 feet times 96 and that gives us 7,680. But remember, we have to divide that by two. So we divide that by two. That's what we're going to add for the vertical wall to the area of the flat roof that comes out to 3,840 square feet. So let's figure up our total. Our surface area that we figured before was 13,920 square feet. Now that's the flat area of 145 feet by 96 feet. And we're going to add to that our vertical wall calculation, 3,840 feet for a total of 17,760 square feet for these roof drains on the lower level. Please note that we're still only on step one of that five-step process, <laughs> but it took us a little bit to get to our square footage. Step two, let's say we go onto the map and we find that our rainfall rate is 1.5 inches for this area. Now we can take it to step three and find our gallons per minute. Our area was 17,760 square feet, and our rainfall rate is 1.5. So we calculate gallons per minute equals 1.5 on our rainfall rate times 17,760 for our area times our constant 0.0104. And we get a total of 277 gallons per minute. We'll examine the roof for step four to see if that has been divided into multiple sets of roof drains. It has not. So we're just going to skip that divider or divide by one. And we keep the same number of 277. And we go to our table. Let's say this time we have 
a pitch or slope of quarter inch per foot. We'll use the column that gives us quarter inch per foot, and we'll follow that down. 277 is more than 31, more than 79, more than 163, and it is more than 234, so our 277 gallons per minute would fit within the row that maximizes at 487 gallons per minute. We're going to stay on that row, come across to the left, and what do we find? Our pipe size for the lower portion of the roof of that building is 6-inch pipe. Yes, example three is six inch roof drain pipe. Have you ever assembled eight or 10 inch PVC pipe? Man. First of all, lots of primer, lots of glue, giant dauber, and you almost need a machine to push that together and hold it in place. All right, let's do one more scenario. Example four, we are asked to calculate the area of the combined upper and lower roof. We're going to try and size the roof drains for the entire building as we put those together. We already know what the lower side of that is. We need to calculate the upper and put them together. So here we go. The upper area, as we observe, is 90 feet long by 96 feet wide. And the total that we get is 8,640 square feet. What we're going to do here is just combine that with our other square footage to find the total and calculate our pipe size for the whole building. So the upper area has 8,640 square feet. The lower area has 17,760 square feet. When we add those together, we're going to get 26,400 square feet. Now, please keep in mind that also factored in our vertical wall, but we've got it all. Our rainfall rate is the same. We used one and a half. Plug it into our equation. Gallons per minute equals 1.5 times 26,400 times our constant 0 0.0104. And we get a total of 412 gallons per minute for this entire building. In this case, we already have that divided between the upper and lower. We're just trying to find the combined. So let's skip our division on step four and let's take it to the tables. We've got a quarter inch per foot on our slope. We come down with our 412 gallons per minute. We'll just skip right to the line that we know it will fit into. It's 487 is where it's gonna fit into. So we come across and find we're gonna use a six inch pipe for this building for the combined storm drains for the whole building. Six inch pipe. All right, that concludes our practice here for storm drainage sizing. Hopefully this helps you as you will be required to size roof drains on a state test. It's very, very likely they will ask you something about that. And with this understanding, you're gonna nail it. You'll do just fine.